Thanks for the request, y'all. I'm taking a break from the from the old projects to to knock up another standard candle. Apparently, the dude's name is Buckley. Let's have a listen. Last week after Trump's inauguration. Wow, your voice is annoying. We're doing this. Washington, D.C. played host to a women's march attended by, well, a lot more people than attended the inauguration. And what do you suppose this tells us about the status quo? Not the band, the socio-political concept. Of course, this resulted in many comments of, why didn't they vote? Maybe if they put this much effort in beforehand, their side would have won the election. That was rather premonissant of the people of the 20th of January, wasn't it? To accurately predict how many people would turn up on the next day. This is just lazy graphics, isn't it? Which may be a fair comment, or maybe they did vote, and it didn't matter because, as we know, three million more people did vote for Hillary than voted for Trump, but the Electoral College system doesn't care about the popular vote. No, and the rules of chess don't care how many pieces you have at the end of the game. You can have both rooks, both knights, and an extra queen all lined up looking pretty, but it doesn't mean shit if you get checkmated by the guy with nothing but two bishops and a king. If you agreed to play a game of chess, having already understood the rules of chess, and you lose, you can't just act like you wanted to play mousetrap all along. Nor can you whine about the rules not caring. In what universe are rules supposed to care? Our rules are not the sentiments of the fucking oracle at Delphi. They are made up of symbols on a fucking page. And you are complaining that they lack emotional intelligence? What kind of pig ignorant shit are you, Buckley? I'm not going to comment either way on whether that's good or not. All that matters is that it is. <laughs> Write that down. That's going to make the funniest gravestone ever. And I mean that in a... Oh, fuck off. So, women march because they're worried about things like Trump and his cronies wanting to take away the rights to safe abortions. Which is a legit worry given the executive order he signed in his first week. Do you know what the Mexico City policy is? It's basically, we the federal government are no longer going to pay foreign non-government organizations to perform abortions. To which my reaction is, wait, you mean you were doing that? In a country with no national health service, average Joe Blow gets a black lung and a slip disc and he has to pay for the surgery himself. But some git with a coat hanger rolls into the dock going, I kill babies good. And you go, shut up and take my money. All that's happened is irresponsible people aren't getting quite as much free shit as they used to. So to equate that to taking away the right to safe abortion is fucking mental. I mean, Trump also did away with the TPP. But I suppose that's translated as taking away the rights of corporate entertainment giants to safely shut down half of the fucking internet. And this march also upset Piers Morgan. <laughs> you know him as Budget Simon Cowell, the other famous angry British talent show judge, who just so happens to have won The Apprentice and, surprise, surprise, is a Trump supporter. I should point out that I would ordinarily have no interest at all in defending Piers Morgan. It, uh, yeah, he's even less popular over here. He used to be in charge of a newspaper. A very dodgy newspaper. He's a very dodgy customer and a very smug, slimy fuck. But so are you, Mr. Buckley. So all things are equal and I'm going to judge purely on the wrongest things being said. I mean, you have a distinct advantage of being the responder rather than the respondee, but something tells me you are nevertheless going to squander it and choke like fuck, as it were. Let's see. He took to Twitter during the rally to suggest that all women who were attending were rabid feminists. Are you suggesting all British men are angry? Like, evidence? I don't, I don't need evidence of you actually suggesting it. <laughs> what do I look like, a journalist? And tweeted this. Imagine if there were a load of men-only marches today. The feminists would go crackers. Yes, they would. They'd go crackers and bananas and nuts. I don't know. I don't know what's so crazy sounding about those foodstuffs. 
It didn't sound like a particularly inspired brunch, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it three different kinds of insane. Anyway, yeah, no, the idea... The idea of letting males do anything without female supervision is horrific and unconscionable to feminists. They won't even let little boys have the fucking Cub Scouts to themselves. Yeah, and yet the Girl Guides remains a strictly dick-free zone. It's an obvious hypocrisy, Buckley. And Mr. Morgan is pointing out that hypocrisy. Nothing wrong has been said so far, except for most of the things you've said. And I'm planning a men's march to protest at the creeping global emasculation of my gender by rabid feminists. Who's with me? I, j bruv, do you think maybe he was joking? Do you think maybe he was sort of lambasting this kind of shit? Our wages are still cut with blades, sharpened by testosterone. Why is the work of a black woman and a Hispanic woman worth only 63 and 54 cents of a- Of a white woman? Of a white man's privileged daughter. I, there was so much to talk about, I didn't catch that when I was actually reviewing it. <laughs> but- that's that's how easily they just slip out of anything being women's fault. <laughs> a black woman, a brown woman, a white man's privileged daughter. Like, the mind boggles. I'm tempted to figure out what boggle actually means, just so I know where the fuck my mind is going. 48,000 people are with him. That's how many like this tweet. <laughs> yes, 48,000 people? on the internet, as in on a global scale, liked his joke and agreed with him that it would indeed be ridiculous. Meanwhile, twice that many people managed to physically gather in one place and say, we do want to march and we don't find it ridiculous. And yet you are... T but t shenanigans. You cannot possibly be for real. No one is this dumb. Some have claimed that he was joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, either he was joking and you've just made a dick of yourself, or he was dead serious, which makes him exactly no worse than the feminists at the Women's March, and by defending the Women's March, you've still made a dick of yourself. As he then later posted this hilarious British witticism. Update, I'm cancelling my men's march. Oh, oh my god, he cancelled it? <laughs> oh, I bet for a few minutes he was genuinely... Drawing up the plans and making some phone calls to organize a men's march. But then he chickened out at the last minute. I, I don't know, something doesn't add up here. There's something incongruent about this story. Are you sure he's telling the truth? Against male gender emasculation. My wife's banned me from going. Okay, dude. You, you've been outwitted by Piers Morgan. You've been outwitted by something Piers Morgan probably spent five seconds writing on the toilet. You've probably spent hours looking at it, getting outraged by it, and making a video about it. You've had all the time in the world to figure this out, and you still got your bollocks danced on. But Piers fucking Morgan on the toilet. You got trolled hard, mad hard, and by an imbecile who wasn't even trying. This is extremely embarrassing for you. I'm surprised you're keeping this video on the internet. Nyak nyak. And though he made some decent points during his Twitter rant, commenting on the extremism of Madonna who claims she's thought about bombing the White House, which by the way only Madonna could say without being brought in for questioning slash tasering. Wrong. Both of you. Any one of the women at that march could have got up and said that into the microphone and not be arrested for it. First of all, it's, it's an obvious piece of rhetorical hyperbole. A lot of school children have had the daydream of blowing up their school with the Millennium Falcon or something. And the extreme extension of that fantasy is from school to White House. That, that what I just said, is called the benefit of the doubt. It's something we typically give to artists and comedians and all ordinary women. And everyone who agrees with us politically, sad but true. And... Secondly, any ordinary woman could say she wants to bomb the White House and all that's going to happen in this case is thousands of other women are going to cheer. If thousands of women cheer, then, you, then you're doing everything right. If thousands of women boo at you, 
or if 25 send mean tweets about you, whichever comes first, then you're probably going down. But thousands of women cheer for you. Help yourself to whatever excuse works. A million women could cheer for the bombing of the White House. And you know, the FBI, the CIA and the police would all look at that and go, man, it's just a million cheering women. <laughs> what are they going to do? Except tell a million men what to do. But then we'll just arrest all the men. <laughs> we're fine, we're good to go. So for Piers Morgan to say that ordinary people could never get away with that is dead wrong. Ordinary women can. And for you to say that anyone but Madonna would never get away with that is even wrong. It's de genocidally wrong. <laughs> I realise I'm now defending Piers Morgan and Madonna for the sake of skewering you, but it's worth it. Your voice is that fucking annoying. The part that's laughable is the creeping global emasculation of my gender. This isn't a joke. This is what he thinks. As I said, if it's not a joke and it's what he thinks, then it is still nothing compared with what feminists think. Global emasculation of my gender? Have you heard of patriarchy theory? Because Piers Morgan just described it perfectly. As if it's not creeping in the case of the patriarchy. Patriarchy is emasculation of women, but it's omnipresent and omnipotent and it's been here since the dawn of time and it'll be here forever unless we do something about it like telling young boys not to rape and then imprisoning them when they haven't raped anyone this is what many men think this is what most women think that women are globally emasculated by men that's why they were able to organize that fucking march and to that i say not very manly to be afraid of that if you ask me well, I suppose I did ask. Did I? I can't remember. So, hey, complaining about being emasculated, that's not very womanly, is it? I am woman, hear me roar. Oh, wow, we're getting oppressed because we're not getting paid for work we didn't do. The, the ironic thing is I'm using the terms emasculation and oppression interchangeably. But to speak of one's emasculation actually is uh, and especially masculine thing to do at least according to the dictionary we'll get to that yes perhaps we will but first the idea of men's rights is already kind of laughable <laughs> really because i've made a career out of laughing at feminists uh, has anyone made a supporting career out of laughing at men's rights activists all those feminist comedians brilliant aren't they come on dudes i'm not gonna be check your privilege guy no, you're going to be suck my paradox guy. More on that later. Not every male is getting dealt a great hand in life. Right at this very moment, there are thousands of homeless dudes simultaneously shitting in bushes all across North America. Oh, wow! Complaining about being homeless? That's not very classically masculine, is it? Poor me, I don't have a home. Ah, fuck off, right? <laughs> Stop being so proud of yourself in my imagination, and then maybe I'll help you. But overall, we're doing pretty good. I'm now going to skip to a point you made at the end of your video, like four minutes later than you said this. I'm trying to pinpoint how long it takes your memory to slide. Uh, at this point, I uh, pinpointed it to no more than four minutes. Maybe men would only make up like 95% of the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Then what? 94%? But overall, we're simultaneously shitting in bushes all across North America. Men make up similar percentages of fortune 500 ceos and the homeless this tells us little to nothing about how men are doing overall it's like it's like the iq thing men make up most of the simpletons and most of the geniuses but when you take the bell curves men have exactly the same average as women now notwithstanding your superhuman ability to forget about the homeless men when it suits your conclusions Thank you for at least providing the ingredients of a balanced argument. When you take as many factors into account as possible, how are the average men doing? Are they closer to homeless or are they closer to billionaire? And how are the average women doing? Same questions. And it's worth pointing out that the wives of those Fortune 500 men live in exactly as much luxury as they do without having to lift a finger 
because the law demands it, both before and after the divorce. And all those homeless men? The only ones who even have wives are the ones who ran out of money before the divorce. It's just a slippery slope until we're all indentured servants to women. I'm going to go back to the middle now. I'll leave your future self to flail around calling himself a straw man. For example, did you ever stop to think about why women are allowed to vote? Because they finally decided to be conscripted in the event of war? Like every other group in living history who ever got the vote? Because men said it was okay. Yes, the government gave women the vote for nothing, having only ever given men the vote for the price of their lives. Now that sounds like something a government of radical feminists would do. And it was a government full of men. So I'll say this as often as I have to. I do not have a problem with women. I have a problem with the radical feminists who run the fucking government. Even if they are 100% men. Not to take anything away from the women who pushed so hard for it, but the Senate in 1919, entirely composed of men, voted on the 19th Amendment. They could have just said no. What would women have done? Voted for different senators? Started blowing shit up? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. You said you weren't going to take anything away from the women who pushed so hard. Well, you seem to be taking away the domestic terrorism they enacted during a time of war. Uh, the, the government, that patriarchal misogynistic government, instead of dealing with them like they would deal with any other terrorist cell during a time of war, they just went, OK, you can have everything you're demanding. You can have the vote for nothing. Every other group, every other demographic in history got the vote by fighting for their country. Women got the vote by fighting against it. It's been like that ever since. Kind of fucked up when you think about it, right? Yeah. And yes, I get that there are things that aren't overly equal for men. Most of them brought on by their fathers and their fathers' fathers. <laughs> Fucking hell, Moses! Do you hear yourself? Brought on by their fathers and their fathers' fathers and their fathers' fathers' fathers and their fathers' 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 fathers. For example, men's rights activists are upset that in a divorce, women almost always get the child. That's what a men's rights activist is. You know, like if, and yet it's considered taboo for me to call myself a men's rights advocate. I agree with that statement. I'm upset, ethically upset, by the inegalitarian biases of the family courts. So if this was me coming in fresh, I'd be like, okay, I have one thing in common with men's rights activists, and one thing in counting. And I think that makes me a men's rights advocate, but I... Fuck it, it doesn't matter. Well... Maybe if society hadn't decided that women are the ones who are supposed to take care of children for the last, oh, several thousand years or so, maybe they wouldn't rule that way in most cases. Oh, well, maybe if society hadn't decided that men rape children and women don't for, oh, thousands and thousands of derps. Yeah, anyone can wax lyrical about anything when they're blaming it all on the society monster from forever ago. Yeah, let's let's summarize. A hundred years ago, everything was men's fault because the government was entirely men. And now, the government is men and women, and so everything is society's fault. Not the government anymore, now it's society. If it was men's fault before, then it's men and women's fault now. Why can you not say that? Why can you not just say it's men and women's fault? The men and women in the government. Yeah, as, as if I didn't know. It's because half of that sentiment is forbidden. Still forbidden. I think you know which half. Women didn't have the vote, so nothing was their fault. Now, 
Women are more than half of the electorate and still nothing is their fault. It's either men's fault or it's the fault of the society monster from forever ago. Which when you turn to page seven you discover is, yes, all men's fault. Because patriarchy. There is one consistent element to this pattern. There's the only consistent element in a blistering tornado of head fuck where anything else goes. The eye of the storm is the universal truth that nothing is ever women's fault. It could be a woman's fault, but nothing is the fault of women as a group. It's not what can be said for men as a group. Even when millions of individual men are having their children taken away from them at the unilateral behest of millions of different individual women, that is still not women's fault. It's society, therefore it's patriarchy, therefore it's men. With a hop and a skip and a jump, we're back to where we always want to be. Black and white upside down land. It's gross, it's racist. And bitching about a march and then saying you want to have your own march? Oh, Buckley. The, the joke, right, the joke, had a fun and wondrous and sexually exciting fling with your head. But, but the, t now times have changed. Your head is standing on the lawn playing Peter Gabriel and begging for forgiveness. But the joke is never going to capitulate to the sweet nothings whispered by your head. It could not be more over. Now, at this point, a lot of my peers would likely diagnose you with autism. And indeed, an, an, an inability to detect sarcasm is often a symptom of autism. But autistics are consistent with their disability. The ones who don't get sarcasm don't get it, no matter who is using it. Indiscriminately. Whereas you, Mr. Buckley, only don't get sarcasm when the bad people are using it. Oh, you used sarcasm several times in this video. You know exactly how it works. You just, as I said, have this superhuman ability to forget things when it's convenient for you. You decide on other people's behalf what they're saying and whether or not they're joking. And then you forget how the fuck that works when you go on to tell the same kind of joke. And, pardon me... But that does not describe autistics. It describes their opposite. Borderlines, narcissists, histrionics, and pathological liars. But I won't go so far as to call you such a thing, even as a joke. I think I can get by just calling you a shyster. Not just a hack, but a, a, a humour sink. You can't just tell your jokes, you have to untell everyone else's as well. You even try to get your jokes by untelling other people's. You're worse than a joke thief. You're a joke vampire. <laughs> Everything else must die so you may live. I'm heckling you, Buckley. How you doing? It's like your shitty little brother crying because he didn't get a present on your birthday. I, how many birthdays do women have now? <laughs> like they say, every day is International Men's Day. But it seems women can pick any day out of the calendar and spontaneously make it a women's day if they feel like it. Even inauguration day. It'd be like going to a breast cancer fundraiser and yelling, yeah, but what about testicular cancer? Sure, that needs awareness too. Maybe choose a better fucking time. Okay, we'll have a convention for men's issues. Oh shit, it got shut down by feminists and they lied about us in the press. Okay, we'll 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 purchase we'll purchase a booth uh, at a neutral convention. Oh shit, we got kicked out by feminists and they lied about us in the press. Okay, we'll ma we'll, we'll make a movie. We'll make a movie about men's issues. Oh shit, it got boycotted by feminists and they lied about. Us. <laughs> Do you see the pattern? It seems like every time we try to talk about men's issues, we get bullied away by feminists going, "What about the women's?" By the way, shut this event down and ban these people from the country. They harass women. Lies, lies, oh shit, oh shit, bullshit, oh shit, lies. But let's talk about classic masculinity for a moment. What is that? I don't know what that is. Is it classic 
as opposed to Baroque or, or jazz fusion? Is it related to class in some clumsy way? Is it in your fucking imagination? Perchance. Feminists and other very PC people refer to this now as toxic masculinity. That also describes nothing. It's purely derogatory because it doesn't describe anything. It's just there to label any undesirable behavior whatsoever, which is performed by a male. It's like the term nigger rage, except it's taught in universities as the truth. And what you mean when you talk about classic masculinity is comparable to that. Okay, it's, it's just that I can't tell if you're mocking feminists and PC people for believing exactly the same thing as you, but with a different word. If you believe you uphold the traits of a truly masculine man... According to whose stereotype? The stereotype of a Russian farmhand is very different from the stereotype of an English gentleman or a Korean graphic artist. Come to think of it, the stereotype of an English gentleman is very different from the stereotype of an English football hooligan. Yeah, they have next to nothing in common with each other. Masculinity, you know, as a social concept, is something that defies itself in every dimension by adapting to its surroundings. So I do not know what the fuck you're talking about when you say the traits of a truly masculine man. As I said, I think this might be a projection coming from your imagination, but let's play with it for the sake of whatever. Shall we say a truly masculine man stands up for himself? Yeah, a truly masculine man is ready, willing and able to defend himself and defend his basic human rights from those who would encroach on them. Is that the kind of you know, uh, flimsy, old-fashioned, discardable stereotype we're talking about? And you believe women are a threat to your manhood by going for a walk with some signs. As I said, you are not very manly. If the signs say, fuck patriarchy, fuck white supremacy, fuck the wage gap, then such a belief is perfectly reasonable because that is threatening language, just in the shortest possible form. If the sign says fuck manhood, then <laughs> such a belief is so obviously accurate as to be mundane. And thank you for telling me your opinion about what manly is. And thank you for giving me another opportunity to say this. Sir, the amount of fucks I give about what you call manly is an amount that made Max Planck shit himself for three days and rethink his life. I said good day. A classically masculine man would have no worries about this. They're just women. They're not as strong as men, not as decisive. They're just emotional beings blowing off steam about how things are not going their way. So a classically masculine man is a man who underestimates women's agency and underestimates women's power. So a classically masculine man is a white knight. You're against that, are you? <laughs> well, guess who else is against it? And guess who's against us for being against it? Not like a man who should be emotionless and fearless. You're supposed to master your emotions, yes, when you're an adult. This, this happens a lot. You're describing adulthood, but you're calling it masculinity. Come to think of it, you're describing self-respect, but you're calling it masculinity. Which is pretty fucked up, if you ask me, and if you've made it this far, you're asking me. So if you feel that women getting together to yell slogans at a building is emasculating, you already admit that you are emasculated. <laughs> if, this, if this was two years ago, I would be frantically hitting my head on this desk right now. Do you know why? Even if we suppose he was serious. Let's get this straight. Let's try and figure out what you think. He said he's emasculated. And the fact that he said that proves that it's true. So fuck him. I said earlier how the, how the terms oppress and emasculate are interchangeable except through gender. Emasculation can be a unisex term, but it has an especially men sort of sub which is 
related in its uh, etymology. But in common parlance, when it happens to men, it's emasculation. When exactly the same thing happens to women, it's oppression. So for the sake of equality, Buckley, would you like to tell everyone for the record that when women claim they're oppressed, that proves they must be oppressed, so fuck them. This makes no sense, no matter which way I switch it, Buckley. As you are an insoluble Rubik's Cube of wrong. That you aren't manly. See what I mean? If you're oppressed, then you aren't womanly, so fuck you. <laughs> How in the jumping jackboot does that make sense? Unless... Womanliness really is considered synonymous with being oppressed. And being emasculated is not synonymous with anything. Can I just clarify this? Do you think you're not one of the PC people or the feminists? Because you're so far indistinguishable at any point. Hell, a men's march itself is emasculating, according to classic masculinity. Protesting? How beta could you possibly be? See, it works for anyone. You know, when, you, when you dissolve that black and white concrete monolith of yours, you notice it works for any group of people who have any hypothetical business being proud of what they are. What's that, Dr. King? You're proud of your genetic and cultural heritage, but, but you're complaining that it's being marginalised and mistreated. <laughs> That's not a very proud thing to do, is it? To speak openly and publicly about being caged? Surely that's far too humiliating for a, for a proud, strong people to talk about. And when you don't have it your way, you just stand there and complain? <laughs> you hardly represent the strong, silent warriors you're supposed to be. This is why there is no Dr. King in the men's movement. Just thousands upon thousands of Malcolm X's. That's basically complaining. Men don't complain. They grit their teeth and they persevere through whatever challenges are thrown at them. What would you have us do, Mr. Buckley? Other than your only advice so far, which is to drop this charade of classic masculinity that we do not hold because you made it up in your fucking head. If we are a group of people whom you've decided are not suitable for complaining verbally... Then with what does that leave us? It, it leaves us with, if you're a real man, you don't talk. You just cut that bitch's head off and take a selfie with it. Put on Instagram. Congratulations, you are everything wrong with every side of the world. You explicitly deny men the option of using words to defend themselves. And you deny men the option of using violence. Especially against women. Well, maybe you don't, but the law certainly does. And in no uncertain terms. And all this adds up to... Men are not allowed to complain. On behalf of men. Moreover, no one is allowed to complain on men's behalf. In any format. Not spoken word, not written word, not interpretive fucking dance. No matter how badly you are treated as a man... You do not have the option of having a problem with it. In any medium other than the quiet desperation of your own thoughts. Perhaps you are one of those men who enjoys the quiet desperation of his own thoughts. I would have to say I might be one of those men. But it's not always a basket of rainbows now, is it? And I certainly would never impose such a mindset on anyone else, nor presume it so as to impose it. A lot of people are more comfortable with a dialogue amongst many than they are with their own inner monologue. And to subject, subject them to such conditions would be something akin to solitary confinement. There is no man, woman or beast who deserves such treatment, in my occasionally controversial opinion. 
So, if you believe you're a real man trying to preserve the rights of men... Those are two completely different things, you insufferable dickhead. Do you understand that? A person who wants to inclusively preserve the human rights of men is not synonymous with some territorial thick neck jock you invented in your fucking head. Do you know there are female men's rights activists, don't you? That this used to be a novelty, and I will it still is a novelty because you keep pretending they don't exist when it suits you. I work, you know, I work with many female men's rights activists, and they still have to sit there while pillocks like you tell them, I, yeah, if you want to defend men's rights like you're some kind of real man, <laughs> and this is nothing they can do but just sit there and go, uh, How do you alter your message? When you're addressing women who feel the same way as the men you're addressing. Yeah, yeah it would be something like, well, if you, if you want a kitchen bare feet ham sandwich, then why are you defending men? You, that's not very womanly. <laughs> so what do, what do you do? Does your message become completely untranslatable when you're saying it to women? And if that's the case, then you are not addressing the argument at all. You're just berating men for making it. And only men. Because they're men. Do you know what we call it when you address the man instead of the argument? You probably do. Most people do at this point. Well, this was at least five fucking straight minutes of what translates from Latin as argument to the man. Trying to have laws overturned that were made by men and enforced by men... Okay, so when men ask the government for human rights, they're hypocrites, so fuck them. And when women ask the government to give equal rights to men, uh, uh, well, the, uh, the brainwashed women, uh, Stockholm Syndrome, they just hate themselves and they hate their own rights. That's a thing that happens to people and totally hasn't happened to me! You have to understand, there's at least a little bit of irony to that. There is more irony to what you've said in this video than I could peg onto your blood vessels if I stretched them out end to end. This is a very long way according to all the factoids. For example, did you know that men's rights activists are against military conscription? You know who made those laws, both in America when the draft was a thing, and in other countries where forced military service is still a thing? Men. You know how in China, A, a son is obligated to financially support his parents in old age, but a daughter is not. And as such, a daughter is an expensive endeavour and a son is an ultimately profitable one. And because they also have a one-child policy, this results in a lot of baby girls being drowned by rather poor and desolate families. But do you know who drowns them? Do you know who usually does the drowning? It's the mother. So, I don't want to hear any of this chat back from women about it. You're the same gender as the majority of the perpetrators. So, you don't get to complain about it, or you're a hypocrite. And neither do the little girls who escaped drowning, or the ones who were found in a dumpster and miraculously survived, and are now complaining about the laws women are breaking and the babies they're murdering. You're the same gender as your mother, you see, so fuck you. That is the, the logic with which you are facing me right now, Mr. Buckley. But on a scale so big, it could wrap around your blood vessels thrice. This society, this society monster from forever ago, can do whatever the hell it likes to poor working class men. And those poor working class men don't get to complain about anything ever because rich men do more work than rich women. And those men made it appealing by suggesting it's a man's duty to defend their country. That is not some unwritten ideal of masculinity, you triple chocolate fucknut. That is called the draft. Yeah, here we go. When rich men send poor men to die against their will, it's just as much the poor men's fault for upholding this classical masculinity 
for being brave and strong and self-sacrificial. Oh, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm such a big, strong Tommy laying down my life so, because I'm such a man. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, six at one half a dozen in the other, right? It's, it's their own fault for strutting into no man's land one day and picking a fight, you piece of shit. Men were not conscripted on the basis of their sense of classical masculinity. It didn't matter if you were a jock or a hippie, or a leftist or a rightist, or even a top or a bottom. If you had a dick, you died in a ditch, you clueless, fucking, throbbing T-bone of never toed cancer. I'm rapidly losing patience with you. I'm surprised I ever had any. People who dodged the draft in the US were considered cowards. You mispronounced criminals. Not real men. Not free citizens. So, I know that empathy isn't really a manly trait either. I suppose I should bow to the, to the wisdom of your experience. But can you imagine how I'd be reacting right now were it not for empathy? Yeah, and, and booze. The booze helps. But you can at least have a little when you see that men make laws that decide how women should live and why women feel it's a men versus women thing. All right, and how do we resolve that problem? We resolve it by having a government of mixed gender. Okay, done. Been in action for a fucking century. Now what? What do you get, wouldn't it? Now, you're, you're going to pretend it hasn't happened, I see. You're going to pretend it's still a hundred years ago for the sake of trying to say something intelligent. This is what I mean, superhuman ability to forget things. You need me to forget an entire century? No problem. Bang. Gone. <laughs> you need me to forget everything since the Pleistocene era? Say no more. Ta-da! Men have all the reproductive rights and women have zero. Whoop! bloody bloody bah! And yes, there are radical feminists who say stupid shit. What? Like, men should die if they want the vote, but women should just have it? Well, then, as I said, we've been living under a radical feminist government for a hundred years. Which, again, would explain the magnitude of the march. Just like there are the red pill popping bros of the men's movement that are cringy as fuck. No doubt. Uh, but red pill popping bros have spent zero centuries in charge of zero empires. Radical feminism is only up to one on both counters in its current name, but it doesn't stop there. Or start, as it were. It would be nice if this only started a century ago. It would be easier to handle. But the unnerving truth is, the team indicated broadly as team man bad woman weak has been in charge of many consecutive empires for many consecutive centuries. But only now has it developed the technology to either eat itself or grow out of its chrysalis of junk gender ideology. Watch this space. And do you think I'm a traitor to my gender for saying these things? If so, you're also not a classically masculine man. <laughs> if you call me a traitor, then you're a traitor to the team I've decided you're on. I don't know how to talk to... I th yeah, yeah, I think if I've got the lingo right here, the response is... Uh, no, uh, you? Clearly. A true man has to protect their women. And they can't do that without rights. Again, wrong every way you slice it. They're just dainty, fragile things that we need to defend so they can sire more heirs for us, after all. You are defending them in this video. They are for birthing new generations. That's what you're defending in this video. That event. Those sentiments. Did you even know that? Did you know? <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm arguing with a superhuman forgetter. I keep forgetting. Which is why we wouldn't let them fight in wars in the first place. Right. It's your... Women don't get governmentally sacrificed to the war machine, even long after getting the vote. And it's because... We don't let them. Meanwhile, men don't get to raise their own children. And it's because we don't let women. 
not be not the ones who raised the men. oh my god look over there ah! oh by the way apparently men's rights groups also don't like these stereotypes that other men have forced upon them we don't like the stereotypes that you are projecting onto us for fuck's sake we are the living embodiment of the defiance of the very stereotype you're talking about we acknowledge men's vulnerability to women men's legal, social, and emotional vulnerabilities in general and to women. But the only thing your fucking head can think is you, know, you care about men, so you must be some kind of knucklehead! Because only a knucklehead would care about men! Well, then you're not even a knucklehead. You're not even a sinew head. You're a blood vessel head. Just one. Never mind stretching to the moon, you would not even stretch to the knuckle. Which means, I don't know how someone can be emasculated when they've already rejected the very idea of masculinity. Okay, so your only advice for men is to drop this facade of classic masculinity. So we do that. And then we come to you, we go, alright, we did that. We cast away the stereotype that you came up with, exactly to the specs you came up with. You know, the whole unemotional, overprotective, proud, stoic man statue you spoke of. It's all gone. Now, now... We, we, we'd quite like to spend time with our children, please. We'd like the equal opportunity to hear a child's laughter and teach them how to ride a bike and stuff. Is that cool? Sorry, what? It's society's fault for traditionally making women the parental caregivers. Well, well that's not me. I just, I just told you just now I have rejected classical masculinity exactly as you described it. So I'm not a hypocrite, you can't just use society against me as though I represent that society. We just confirmed that I don't. So why can't I see my children, please? Stop telling me whose fault this is and how long ago they died. Tell me what we're going to do to fix it. Sorry, what? I'm just being controlling and dominating by demanding to see my children. All right, then why is that okay when women do it? Why is it okay when women demand to be the only parent who sees their children? Is it because society wants to demand that women be the caregivers? Oh shit, haven't you fucking blocked? Uh, is it because of society and classic masculinity? Because I already told you I reject those things. I'm interested in being open about my vulnerabilities and I want to be a caregiver to my children. Sorry, what? Whoop, 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 Fry did it. I, you've lost me. What are you, where are you going? Yeah, that's, that's my, that's my creative way of saying I'm done with you. <laughs> I sometimes, I sometimes worry that I rely on low hanging fruit, but then I see shit like this. Thousands of lunatics amass in one place to talk utter shit about nothing all day. And all you could say is, hey, isn't Piss Morgan a douche? <laughs> Am I right? Hey, hey, I really stuck it to all those people who love Piss Morgan. <laughs> I, no one. Buckley, you, you are preaching to the choir and everyone on earth is the choir. It's the very definition of virtue signaling. And if that wasn't bad enough, in your attempt to make Piss Morgan look like a douche, you failed so hard. Epically hard. So hard that you made Piers Morgan look like an agreeable, urbane voice of reason compared with the space-warping amplitude of your own unspeakably unpleasant incompetence. You have, you have achieved the impossible. Sir, you are truly an artist. I'm going to do what I often do and tell myself you're just doing a Kaufman on everyone. <laughs> or, or doing a Wakim, if you like. Or doing a LaBeouf. If, if at some point in the future we find out the truth. Because it's easier to compartmentalise that. Than to compartmentalise the web of implications inherent in the idea that minds like this really do exist. Good luck with the comedy, sir. <laughs> Though I don't think you'll need it. You'll need persistence. And quite a lot of free time. All the best. Goodbye. And don't ever talk when you fuck.
will spell the end. The end. <laughs>